citizens of the planet Earth to have ever walked on the moon. Gene, even as we come on, we can see the uh, orbiter access arm is being uh, retracted. Frank, we're in our final uh, critical phases. Uh, we're inside nine minutes now. The con is resumed. Everything looks go. The access uh, arm is now coming back. That is with the white room on it. Yes. Uh, the crew now is, uh, is uh, subsisting uh, near totally on their own spacecraft just before launch. And the clock shows six minutes and 15 seconds or so to go before a scheduled liftoff at 7.19 Eastern time this morning. The launch window is very... Uh, brief today. It's only actually 33 minutes, but we've had no indication of any difficulty. And as we say, the countdown is proceeding smoothly. Uh, Gene, uh, you met Leonid Brezhnev, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, during the Apollo Soyuz uh, program, we had uh, a couple meetings with him over there with the cosmonauts and with the astronaut crew. That what was, was your there. impression of the man? I was very impressed. A man in control, a man who was uh, obviously very interested in our space program and certainly very proud of his own. Well, that certainly was a time for great, of great pride in oh, the Soviet Union, that they were able to take part in that joint effort with the United States. And we should point out that one of the men who is on board today, uh, of, uh, on board Columbia, Vance Brand, was, of course, uh, a member of the Apollo Soyuz crew in 1975. Well, we are at 5 minutes and 20 seconds. And you can see now, let's take the beautiful picture there of the, well, not just the clock, the clock, by the way, has, uh, <laughs> I should say, the, uh, that sign you saw alongside was Telesat Canada. That is the name of one of the companies uh, that uh, has a satellite on board the uh, Columbia that will be launched. And that, of course, is what makes this mission so different, isn't it, Gene? Well, frankly, most people out there, I, I believe they look, there's another shuttle launch and we're on our way again. But it's a little bit more important than that. Uh, we have four crew members on board. Uh, we have two commercial satellites, and I stress the word commercial. Uh, the crew is going to extend the capabilities of manned space on this flight again by going out EVA or spacewalk, if you will, out in the uh, payload bay uh, where they may be able to repair satellites in the future. The, the bottom line of this mission is uh, we are really launching into a commercial venture now in space, and the payout over the number of years uh, to come could be fantastic. Yes, there will be two satellites launched from space. We should quickly identify the members of the crew. Here is Vance Brand, the commander in the upper left. On the right, uh, Colonel Robert Overmeyer, the uh, pilot of the United States Marine Corps. Vance Brand is the only one who has had any previous space experience. In the lower left, Dr. Joe Allen of uh, Crawfordsville, Indiana. Dr. Allen is a physicist. And on the lower right on your screen is uh, Dr. Bill Lenore who is uh, a Ph.D. also with a uh, advanced degrees in electrical engineering. Well, there we are, the clock, three minutes and 45 seconds. And there she sits, the bird nestled there in that familiar setting at 39A. You see the two solid rocket boosters alongside. The uh, Columbia is actually made it, of course, to the huge ET, the external tank, that will power it on up into orbit. And that Frank, first satellite will be launched uh, this afternoon. Go this ahead. afternoon, after about eight hours, the first satellite will uh, be launched by the uh, two scientists, astronauts, if you will, but they're very much operational astronauts. Uh, you know, I went out there last night and I looked at, uh, at Columbia. She, besides being a beautiful bird, it was almost like after four flights, she, she really knew now where her, uh, her role in life was to be. Uh, she was ready to go to work, ready to really reach out and, uh, and accomplish something. And the weather just could not be better. There, well, there are practically no clouds. The sun has come out, and it appears now that Columbia and the four astronauts will zoom off into a cloudless sky in what is certainly going to be a spectacular launch. We're only two minutes and 45 seconds away. Let's begin to listen now to launch control. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. The gaseous oxygen vent arm uh, will be retracted shortly. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. The fuel cell's ground supply of oxygen and hydrogen has been terminated, and the vehicle is now on its onboard supply. And the gaseous oxygen vent arm is being retracted, lifting off of the nose of the external tank. T minus two minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. The main engines have been moved to their start position, and the astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories of their onboard computers and verified that there are no unexpected errors. One minute, 57 seconds. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. 
how long they've waited for this change. Some of these people have been in the program since 1967. Well, this, this crew doesn't have a great, uh, great amount of experience in flight, but they're probably the most well-trained crew by, by the standpoint of great background and training. Uh, to ever fly up on a space mission. Seconds. A lot of flying skill on board. They have a lot of brain power, too. There sure is. You've got, you've got four fine, uh, fine gentlemen, and uh, Lenore and, and Alan really add a new dimension to our capabilities in space. Come on, Gene, let's turn it around. One minute. Watch it now. Frank, you're, getting, you're, you're putting yourself in launch mode again. Oh, I tell you. It can never be the usual or the accustomed thing. This has to be perhaps one of the finest days we've seen yet for a long time. Oh, yes, it's just perfect. And every eye down here now is trained out across the swamp. There's marshland here. We're about three and a half miles away from the launch pad. And everybody watching to see it. The hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices are used to ensure that any hydrogen flowing through the engines prior to ignition does not accumulate, causing a small explosion. T minus 40 seconds. We're just seconds away from switching command of the countdown from the ground computers to the onboard computers. And the SRB development flight instrument recorders are on. Okay, and we have a go for auto we're, sequence we're ready. start. Frank, I think you'll be qualified on one of these uh, oh, no. flights pretty soon. 21 seconds and I'm counting, the SRB nozzles are being moved to the launch position. It's always a first time. Yeah. All right, let's go. T minus 15 seconds. World standby for a 12, celebration on 11, Veterans 10. Day. We are go for main engine ignition. Six. We have main engine ignition. Three, two, one, and solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the goes. operational station with two satellites on board, and the shuttle has cleared the power. for the sound. Roger roll. Roger roll, Columbia. Houston now controlling mission control. Confirms roll maneuver starting. Turn around now. Quick roll over. 20 seconds. The thrust looks good. <laughs> 26 seconds, roll maneuver completed. 30 seconds, Columbia now, one nautical mile in altitude, throttling engines down to 85% is program. Mark 40 seconds, Columbia now, two and a half nautical miles in altitude, one nautical mile down range. Mark 50 seconds coming up now. But in just so few seconds time, it's just a massive power and strong and powerful. We might be able to see this one forever. <laughs> Less than a minute now, we're going to have the separation of the uh, uh, solid rocket booster. We ought to get a perfect view of that separation. Four minutes, 35 seconds. I'm Captain Tom Bob Stewart advising the crew of flight depression because of the headwind. Columbia moving out. Uh, free plan on three good engines. One minute, 45 seconds. The brand Mr. over there, Lenore Allen, is now coming to the last race of the Earth's atmosphere. Columbia now 19 nautical miles in altitude, 18 nautical miles down range. About 10 seconds away from the separation of the uh, Mark, solid rocket minutes. boosters on the side. Standing by now for solid rocket booster separation confirmation. Move, Roger, PC. They'll move sideways away. Columbia now 25 go. nautical miles in altitude. These are the best pictures we've ever had, Gene. It's a spectacular day out here. Two minutes, 15 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster separation. So Columbia is still made it now to the human external tank. 22 seconds, onboard guidance is converging in program. Up. Columbia is now steering for a precise window in space cape. for main engine cutoff. Getting a bit difficult now to keep tracking 23 it. nautical miles down range. We've got about six more minutes of that main engine to burn here to get them into orbit. Columbia, this is Houston. Your first stage was a low on the Everybody's still staring morning. up in the sky. Okay. Two minutes, 44. Two minutes, Two minutes. 49 seconds, Columbia I told you she was ready to go. She just looked last night, but she wanted to go to work this morning. 
We just had a picture of launch control. Launch control no longer really has anything to do. Because, of course, the uh, mission control in Houston has now taken over. Three of the astronauts have just experienced for the first time that, I suppose, unbelievable sensation of riding that bird up into space. The vibration and the noise is, uh, for the most part, been left behind them after those solid boosters drop off. It's a smooth ride now, very, kind of quiet. Right? Reported to be very smooth ride. Uh, Frank, I don't know, I, I want to give it another try, go up there and, <laughs> and give you a report for myself firsthand. Get back into the program, Jerry. I'm, I'm going to re-enlist here very quickly. <laughs> well, Joe Allen actually was in and then uh, went out for a time, didn't he? The well, Joe had some second thoughts and uh, the opportunity came to fly, uh, certainly not as soon as he had hoped, but uh, when it did come, he, uh, he certainly was around. Two of the uh, men on board here are uh, uh, mission specialists, as they're called, uh, Dr. Joe Allen and uh, Dr. Bill Lenore. Alan is a physicist who is on the faculty at Yale, and uh, Lenore was on the faculty at MIT. Here's a replay now, quickly. Let's watch it from a somewhat different angle. There it goes. This is a replay now of the launch, which occurred just four and a half minutes ago. Could not have painted a prettier picture. Oh, really maneuver started. Of course, the skies were so clear. 20 seconds, plus looks good. 26 seconds, roll maneuver completed. That long, long 30 tail seconds, of Columbia now, one nautical mile in altitude, throttling inches that. down to 85%. It just seems to up program. on that wall, doesn't it? It, it? It's amazing to me yet that we can put all that preciseness into this launch. March 40 the seconds, Columbia now, two and a half nautical miles in uh, altitude, one nautical mile. The mission that's ahead. Celebration on. And the years and years of work. Here's another replay. We'd like to show it to you over and over again in the yes. time that we have. Liquid engines yes. light first. Yeah. And as long as when they check out, everybody says go, then those silent Hit like it. at this point, and now she's over. There she goes, and what a sight today. This is an angle. This is a Dead by for the south. And when you stop to think, the uh, the orange yeah. tank, the uh, center line tank there is Look filled that baby uh, with nothing but oxygen and hydrogen for fuel. You see the quick rollover almost to just seconds after she clears the tower. You know, it's amazing to see what is an airplane and in our cosmetic sense to be standing on its tail and point it skyward and then just roll on its back. It's, a, you know, for a pilot, that's sort of a special tribute to watch it. I suppose so. Well, this is a replay that you're watching now. Columbia is already six minutes into the mission. We are about two minutes and five seconds or so away from the separation of Columbia and the uh, ET, the uh, external tank that provides the main source of uh, power and fuel to propel Columbia into orbit. Six minutes and uh, 19, 20 seconds into the mission. They're over the South Atlantic. And she is now capable, uh, if she loses an engine, to land at the car. She yes. no longer has to come home. In Senegal. Well, Columbia has soared off into space. She's not yet achieved orbit. She will very shortly. Everything is going well, and our coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in a moment.